Uh, okay, so we'll start now. Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Good evening. Uh, welcome to the International Women's Day uh, 2023 event, which is organized by the Employees Federation of Pakistan. My name is Leila Fatma. I'm the training uh, and development coordinator at EFP uh, and also a part of Women Empowerment Subcommittee that we have here. Uh, I'm so thrilled to uh, be your moderator uh, for today. Before we start, I would kindly ask you if you don't mind keeping your microphone on mute so that we can, you know, uh, do the entire thing very uh, smoothly. Uh, and do, and like if you do have a question, so you can just drop it in the chat box and we can address the questions later. Uh, now, it's uh, the webinar. I'll just give a brief overview of what it is. The webinar is for this and uh, we wanted to mark this into uh, we wanted to mark an event for this uh, year's International Women's Day theme, which was basically digital. So our basic, uh, our webinar is basically on the digital skills, uh, using the digital skills to empower the women. So now it's my distinct pleasure to welcome Sayyid Nazar Ali, Secretary General EFP uh, and Chief Executive, Executive Officer uh, of Skills Development Council, Karachi, for his welcome remarks. Sir Nazar, you may join the floor. Uh, thank you, Lela. Uh, uh, first of all, on behalf of the Employers Federation of Pakistan, I welcome you all connected uh, at the moment uh, to a webinar on uh, empowering women uh, through digital skills. Uh, this is uh, uh, one activity of series of activities the Employers Federation of pa Employers Federation of Pakistan has planned to celebrate International Women Day, and we have many other activities. Uh, empowering women uh, is a very important area, uh, not only the uh, requirement of uh, uh, achieving the sustainable development goal and the uh, various convention, international convention. Uh, the Employers Federation of Pakistan attach high priority and is a core activity uh, women empowerment is a core activity of the Employers Federation of Pakistan, and we have been celebrating and you know, organizing uh, this uh, International Women Day to reaffirm our commitment for uh, empowering women and uh, promoting gender equality at the workplace. Well, the development of any country uh, is not possible unless uh, its all available human resources are properly trained and utilized in the economic process. Uh, and uh, it is not possible that we have a big part of our country, 50% of Pakistan, we exclude economic activities and then we talk about the development. Ki baat kare. So empowering movement is important for uh, equitable, inclusive, and sustainable economic development in any country. When we economic empowerment, ki ba, jab hum, wo, empowering women, ki baat karte hai, basically our goal is that our women, our children, are capable that they should take uh, their own control of their lives and make their own decisions about their economic decisions. अपने एजुकेशनल फैसले कर सकें अपने इन चीजों को देख सकें और यह जरूरी है उस चीज के लिए अब नाउ इफ वी आर अनफॉर्चूनेटली अगर हम देखें तो हमारे यहां خواتین जो हैं और ग्लोबली भी और वैसे भी थर्ड वर्ल्ड कंट्रीज में दे आर फेस विद मल्टीपल इश्यूज एंड डिस्क्रिमिनेशंस ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सोशल इकोनॉमिकल और पैरिटी नहीं है uh, हमारे पास वो फैसिलिटीज इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटीज उनके पास अवेलेबल नहीं है अब हम जब हम बात करते हैं डिजिटल uh, सोसाइटी या डिजिटल उसकी जो के आज का टॉपिक है हमारा कि जिसमें हम ये बात कर रहे हैं कि एंपावरिंग वुमेन थ्रू डिजिटल स्किल्स यस ऑफ कोर्स ये जो डिजिटल सोसाइटी है आज की व्हिच इज ड्रिवन बाय द इंफॉर्मेशन एंड कम्युनिकेशन टेक्नोलॉजी की जो हम बात करते हैं दैट इज रिजल्टिंग इन कंप्लीट ऑटोमेशन because of the utilization and use of uh, modern technologies at the workplace, so yes, it provides uh, enormous potential and opportunities for the female, uh, empowering female and promoting gender equality. Because 
इट आल्सो प्रोवाइड द वेज ऑफ फ्लेक्सिबल वर्किंग का देते हैं जिस जरिए या जिसमें अगर फ्लेक्सिबल वर्किंग और खासकर कोविड में ये चीज बड़ी क्लियर सामने आई कि वर्क फ्रॉम होम है या फ्लेक्सिबल वर्किंग आवर्स है जिसमें खातन जो हैं या हमारी बच्चियां जो हैं दे कैन एडजस्ट देयर इकोनॉमिक लाइफ और देयर पेड इनकम विद दी जो केयरिंग रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज है उसके साथ वो एडजस्ट कर सकते हैं लेकिन जब हम उसको बात देखें कि ये तमाम चीजें अपनी जगह के डिजिटल सोसाइटी ने एक बहुत ज्यादा अपॉर्चुनिटीज क्रिएट करी लेकिन बिकॉज ऑफ दैट डिस्क्रिमिनेशन जो परसिस्टेंट है जो एग्जिस्ट कर रहा है बिकॉज ऑफ द लैक ऑफ एक्सेस ऑफ वुमेन टू डिजिटल सोसाइट डिजिटल टूल्स या डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी उसका जो बेनिफिट है उससे वो क्या कहते हैं हासिल करने से कास्ते रहे उनको वो बेनिफिट अवेलेबल नहीं हो रहे रादर उसकी लैक ऑफ एक्सेस की वजह से वो ये जो डिजिटल डिवाइड है या जो हमारी क्या कहते हैं चीजें और ज्यादा बढ़ती जा रही है राधा दैन इस गैप को कम करने के लिए और मैं क्योंकि मैं यहाँ पे कोट करूंगा जो कि एग्जीक्यूटिव डायरेक्टर हैं यूएन की साइमा विच हैज वेरी राइटली पॉइंटेड आउट कि जनाब एक्सेस टू जो क्या कहते हैं डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजीज है इट इज एज राइट ऑफ वुमेन एज जैसे के किसी आदमी का है और ये बिल्कुल उनका यह हक है कि वो डिजिटल सोसाइटी का जो फ्रूट है या जो बेनिफिट है वो उसको उसी तरीके से एंजॉय करें जैसे कोई और क्या कहते हैं जैसे मेल कर रहे हैं लेकिन इसके लिए ये जरूरी है कि हमें खातन के लिए जेंडर रिस्पॉन्सिव पॉलिसीज एंड प्रोग्राम्स फॉर एक्सेस टू डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी के लिए हमें करने पड़ेंगे क्योंकि जब तक इन हमारी खातन और हमारी बच्चियां जो हैं लड़कियां जो हैं उनका एक्सेस नहीं होगा उनका स्किल्स डेवलप नहीं होगी जब तक वो इन प्लेटफॉर्म्स को यूज नहीं कर सकेंगे डिजिटल सोसाइटी के जो नॉर्म्स हैं क्योंकि जब हम बात करते हैं डिजिटल सोसाइटी की तो फिर हम बात करते हैं डिजिटल सिटीजनशिप की और जब हम डिजिटल सिटीजनशिप की बात करते हैं तो हम बात करते हैं कि वो ऐसे लोग जिनकी ये एबिलिटी हो कि वे जितने भी डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स हैं उनको यूज कर सकें टू गेट द इंफॉर्मेशन टू यूज द इंफॉर्मेशन टू कम्युनिकेट द इंफॉर्मेशन तो ये बहुत ही इंपॉर्टेंट एरिया है कि हम इसको कैसे करें अब अगर हम आप देखें वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम को अगर हम आप देखें तो वर्ल्ड इकोनॉमिक फोरम ने अब जो अपनी रिपोर्ट रिलीज की है उसमें वो ये बात कर रहे हैं कि नाइनटी परसेंट ऑफ द जॉब इन द फ्यूचर ऑफ वर्क विल बी रिक्वायरिंग डिजिटल स्किल्स अब अगर 90% परसेंट ऑफ दॉब जो है वो डिजिटल स्किल्स की जरूरत होगी और हम खातन को डिजिटल स्किल्स पे ट्रेन नहीं करेंगे तो इसका मकसद ये हुआ कि हम जो एग्जिस्टिंग एम्प्लॉयमेंट भी जो है वो भी हम उनसे भी खातन से हम छीन रहे होंगे तो इसलिए ये बहुत जरूरी है कि जो भी ग्लोबल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैं लोकल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैं गवर्नमेंट्स हैं वो ये देखें कि हाउ बेस्ट दे कैन अडोप्ट पॉलिसीज विच इज रिस्पॉन्सिव टू दी फीमेल टू प्रोवाइड देयर एक्सेस इस सिलसिले में जब हम बात करें तो बिजनेस की भी एक बहुत बड़ी जिम्मेदारी है क्योंकि बिजनेस जो है वो शुड बी रिस्पॉन्सिबल होनी चाहिए बिजनेस जो है अब इसकी जरूरत है कि वो एस डी जी को अचीव करने के लिए और जो दूसरे जो कन्वेंशन है उनको कंप्लाई करने के लिए भी ये देखे तो ये जरूरी है कि बिजनेस जो है वो ये देखे कि हाउ दे कैन मेक एन एडोप्ट policies that promote not only gender equality at the workplace but that promotes training and education of their existing employees female employees ke unko digital skills ki hum training de taaki wo apne aap ko prepare kar sake for the future of work where digital skill will be a primary driver for uh, that growth ye hum dekhe isi tarike se wo apni gender responsive policies banaye zyada opportunities de और फिर जब हम बात करते हैं इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटीज भी तो हमें इन सम केसेस इक्वालिटी प्रोड्यूस करने के लिए इक्वालिटी करने के लिए हमें इक्विटी की जरूरत होती है तो हमें ये देखना होगा कि हमारी जो पॉलिसीज जो हैं इंडस्ट्री वो इक्विटेबल पॉलिसीज बनाए जिसके जरिए वो इक्वालिटी को प्रमोट कर सके एट दी वर्क प्लेस इन एजुकेशन इन ट्रेनिंग ताकि फॉर एग्जाम्पल इसकी मिसाल में बड़ी देता हूँ कि बार दफा हम ये कहते हैं कि जी इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी है और उस ट्रेनिंग के लिए हम रिक्वायरमेंट रख देते हैं डिग्री की अब हमारे पास हमें पता है कि कोई खातन ऐसी होंगी नहीं जिनके पास डिग्री है तो इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी तो नहीं हुई ना 
इक्वल अपॉर्चुनिटी तो वहां आएगी कि जब हम उसको पहले वो डिग्री का का वो प्रोविजन दें और उसके बाद फिर उसको हम वो करें तो इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कि हम अपनी जो पॉलिसीज हैं उनको देखें वो इक्विटेबल है और बिजनेस जो है इस सिलसिले में ये देखे कि जो हर रोल के अंदर खातन को मौजूद होना चाहिए इंक्लूसिव और डाइवर्सिटी जो है वो बहुत जरूरी है और आजकल वैसे भी ग्लोबली में ग्लोबली भी ये चीज बहुत जरूरी है और खासकर टेक इंडस्ट्री जहां पे वुमेन पार्टिसिपेशन बहुत कम है ग्लोबली भी अगर आप देखें जो टेक इंडस्ट्रीज है उसमें वुमेन पार्टिसिपेशन कम है और पाकिस्तान और थर्ड वर्ल्ड कंट्री में तो बहुत ज्यादा और उसकी वजह यह है कि अगर अभी आप देखें कि जो इंटरनेट यूजर हैं उनमें मेल और फीमेल का तनासब क्या है तो आप ये देखेंगे कि सेवेंटी परसेंट ऑफ इंटरनेट यूजर जो है वो मेल हैं इसी तरीके से आप अगर देखें कि हाउ मेनी फीमेल्स हैव दी एक्सेस टू ई बैंकिंग ई ट्रांजेक्शन कितनी खातन कर रही हैं तो वो भी आप देखेंगे वो बहुत कम एरियाज में है और वो भी सिर्फ कन्फाइन है टू द मेजर सिटीज तो इसलिए बहुत जरूरी है कि उस डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजीज का फायदा लेने के लिए भी कि उनके पास ये इंफॉर्मेशन अवेलेबल हो उनके पास एम्प्लॉयमेंट अपॉर्चुनिटीज हो उनके पास लर्निंग प्लेटफॉर्म मौजूद हो ये बहुत जरूरी है कि हम अपनी खातन को बच्चियों को डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स को यूज करने की तरबियत दें उनके लिए स्पेशलाइज ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम करें बिजनेस जो है दे शुड सिट विद अकेडमिया टू स्टार्ट टेक कैरियर ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स वो इन एस वे के जिस तरीके से अप्रेंटिसिप मॉडल्स होते हैं इंडस्ट्रीज जो है वो विद इन दी इंडस्ट्रीज अप्रेंटिसिप ट्रेनिंग अप्रेंटिसिप प्रोग्राम प्रमोट करें एक्सक्लूसिवली फॉर द फीमेल एजुकेशन बिजनेस जो है अकेडमी के साथ बैठ के ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम्स करें जो कि डिजिटल स्किल्स के ऊपर हों ताकि उन बच्चियों को वो एम्प्लॉय कर सकें और पर्टिकुलरली जब हम ये बात कर रहे हैं कि आने वाले वक्त में सारा कुछ जो है 90 परसेंट जॉब जो हैं वो हमारी डिजिटल स्किल्स रिक्वायर कर रही होंगी तो ये वैसे भी जरूरी है और बिजनेस को ये भी रियलाइज करना चाहिए कि डाइवर्सिटी जो है वो बिजनेस के लिए भी बेहतर है इंक्लूसिविटी जो है वो बिजनेस के लिए भी बेहतर है क्योंकि जब आप ये प्रभु हुआ है ये बात कि डाइवर्स वर्क या इंक्लूसिव वर्क फोर्स इज ऑलवेज मोर कम्पिटेटिव एंड बेटर इन परफॉर्मिंग दॉब्स रादर दैन ए सिमिलर वर्क फोर्स तो ये बहुत जरूरी है वी नीड टू मेक अवर फीमेल सेंटर ऑफ द टेक्नोलॉजी सेंटर ऑफ द इनोवेशन इफ वी हैव टू एक्सप्लोर दियर फुल पोटेंशियल एंड मेक दैम टू कंट्रीब्यूट इन द इकोनॉमिक विद डेवलपमेंट विद इक्वल प्राइड ये बहुत जरूरी है कि हमें इन पॉलिसीज के ऊपर किया जाए इम्प्लॉय फेडरेशन ऑफ पाकिस्तान एज एक्सप्लेन अर्यर is fully committed to promote this cause uh, for the uh, women empowerment or uh, both very recently uh, we have uh, implemented a project jisme humne gender equality ko promote karne ke liye uh, we had a uh, complete survey to see and examining the policies of various uh, organizations ki wo kaun se initiatives hain kaun si policies hain jo kisi companies ne adopt ki hain then we recognize those companies in the uh, programs ताकि हम दूसरों को मोटिवेट कर सकें टू हैव दिस सच इनिशिएटिव ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम जो है वो हमने खातन के लिए किया एंड नाउ वी आर आल्सो वर्किंग ऑन ए अनदर फेज टू नया प्रोजेक्ट की हम बात कर रहे हैं जिसमें डिजिटल स्किल्स जो है फॉर द फीमेल इज ए पार्ट ऑफ दैट प्रोजेक्ट जिसके अंदर हम बच्चियों को मुख्तलिफ डिजिटल प्लेटफॉर्म्स के ऊपर जो है उनके इस्तेमाल की डिजिटल स्किल्स जो है उनके ऊपर ट्रेनिंग दे सर वी कैन नॉट हियर यू प्रॉपर्ली दे कैन सेल्फ एम्प्लॉयएबल और दे कैन एंगेज देमसेल्फ इनटू इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटी व्हिच इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर इक्विटेबल एंड सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट इन पाकिस्तान अह ओके थैंक यू सर नजर फॉर योर वेलकम रिमार्क्स एंड शेयरिंग द वर्क दैट ईएफपी हैज बीन डूइंग आपने बहुत अच्छी अच्छी जगहों पे टॉपिक्स को टच किया है जैसे जेंडर रिस्पोंसिव प्रोग्राम्स एंड द पॉलिसीज दैट द बिजनेस शुड मेक and uh i i am very grateful ki aapne hame join kiya even though you had another meeting so thank you for coming on board okay so before i move further i just want to uh comment again that if you have a question or comment please feel free to drop it on the, in the chat box and we'll definitely try to address it Achha, at the end uh before we move on uh to the speaker session i want to introduce our speakers uh 
we are joined by Mr. Razi Mushtaba Heather, who is the National Pro uh, Project Coordinator at ILO Islamabad, based in Pakistan. And we have Ms. Faiza Yusuf, who is the founder of Women in Tech and co founder of Code Girls. Uh, and we have Ms. Fajr Rabia, who is an executive director of Pakistan Alliance of Girls Education, page. Uh, now it's my extreme uh, pleasure to introduce our first speaker, Mr. Razi Mushtaba Heder. He's a national project coordinator of the uh, ILO Pakistan office in Islamabad. Mr. Heder is currently leading uh, a diverse project in Pakistan on poverty reduction strategies and in strengthening integrated policy framework for formalization and decent work. EFP had the pleasure to work closely with him in the successful exec exec execution of the Women Empowerment Project last year. So I invite Mr. Razi for his keynote address. So please make sure to unmute yourself and I hand it over to you now. Thank you, Leila. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Empire Federation of Pakistan leadership uh, and all the panelists and all the participants who are present over here uh, for their participation in this uh, very important, very pertinent uh, uh, consultation. And uh, it's not, I, I would say it's not a traditional IWD celebration, which links to certain speeches. And, you know, it's very enlightening to see that, you know, Employer Federation of Pakistan has really uh, synced it with the emerging and needs and uh, needs of the our needs of the uh, needs of the ages and also in sync with the uh, UN uh, IWD theme which is uh, digitalization and that to uh, digitalization for all as rightly pointed out by Sayyid Nazarli Saab also that you know any uh, any development any key factor that is based on inclusiveness is an acceptable thing Exclusiveness, discrimination always lead uh, to undesirable results, leads to uh, deprivation of few uh, few people. Um, before I start on, on these things in detail, there are some facts that I would like to um, bring to all the participants over here. First is that on average, women are paid about 20% less than men around the world. So when we are talking about wages, so this is the discrimination, this is the disparity in wages. And remember that this disparity is based basically on gender because they are women, not because they are less talented, not because they don't have the skills, not because they don't have the uh, right, uh, uh, right academic uh, qualification, just because of the gender division and segregation based on discrimination, women are paid globally 20% less than men around the world. Second important thing is access, access to things. Access, while individual characteristics such as education, working time, occupational segregation, skills and experience explain part of the gender pay gap, a large part is due to discrimination based on gender. So the gender discrimination, not our in our society, but also globally plays a great part in exclusiveness and in depriving women of the right opportunities, in depriving women of the, of the part they can play in the economies of their own countries and in the economy of the world. Depriving 50% of uh, the population of a country like Pakistan of opportunities based on exclusiveness, based on uh, discrimination is is on one hand, of course, uh, um, is a bad thing for the women in themselves, but at the larger, it is a great setback for the economy of the country in its also. I would also like to bring that according to the UN Women's Gender Snapshot 2022 uh, report, women exclusion from the digital world has shaved $1 trillion from the gross domestic product of low and middle income countries in the last decade. So when we, when we, uh, quantify these figures, the exclusions of women in from the digital world, we come to this figure, which, which is $1 trillion. And this is a huge figure. So exclusiveness, depriving women from uh, digital uh, learning and digital platform that has become, uh, has caused a lot of, uh, has a lot of loss in terms of financial things. 
and this loss is estimated to grow to 1.5 trillion dollars by 2025 without action so if all of us don't take actions at our own end at our individual at our collective at our organizational uh, uh, stature wherever we are will not be able to curtail these things and curtail these losses whatever organization we may represent whether it's an employer organization the worker organization the government that we represent the international uh, international organizations that we all are a part of we all have a responsibility to mainstream gender and not only mainstream gender just in our speeches and in our words and in our you know writings whatever but take practical and pragmatic steps to really enforce and really you know uh, make this happen because without a collaborative and without a collective action we, we will not be able to achieve it at our country level at our, at the global level so we all are a relevant stakeholder we all have an important part to play in this uh, concern and hence we must <clears throat> also realize that we must come together to do this second thing is that an important thing also that the ilo advocates is decent work when we talk about the gig platform when we talk about the digital uh, platforms where you know uh, there's a lot of uh, job opportunities we also have to look at from the lens of lens of decent employment decent employment means wages that is commensurate with the work wages that uh, include social protection wages that uh, include um, wages that include also equality between um, men and women paying the same uh, amount of wages for the well, uh, work of the same value so these are some of the things having a voice in in your uh, conditions of employment so are these things available to the gig economy or platform economy worker irrespective of what gender do they represent but moreover again here also we will uh, we will come to know that women again here face a lot of uh, discrimination based on <clears throat> uh, the gender specific things also in pakistan also if if we look at the uh, women who are urban based it's okay we might assume that everyone has access to you know a um, uh, smartphone everyone has access to a laptop a connectivity internet but what about the women who are in uh, who are who are in villages who are in rural background uh, what about their connectivity how about access to education for them how about access of technology to them so we have to take all of them uh, on board to see how we can uh, promote this access to education access to uh, uh, access to information technology and provide them equal chances most of the um, for example in it uh, now now that the uh, it has grown into a real industry and there is an artificial intelligence and where people where people see that you know it's going to replace even jobs and going to do you know a lot of work we can we can either see it as an opportunity or we could see it as a threat depends upon how we you know position ourselves how we you know prepare ourselves for the emerging changes that are coming globally so so we have to prepare ourselves unfortunately i still see that most of our entrepreneurship or skill programs and particularly when i talk about the women they are based on again the same uh, sui dhaga and you know uh, embroidery inhone karni hai rali inhone banani hai or that kind of thing topiya inhone banani hai aur ye kameezon mein sheeshe lagane hain of course i don't say that they are not important they are important of course they represent a part of our culture but but we have to be the ambassadors of change we have to also realize that how time and how momentum and how technology is going if we will not uphold the technological change and if we will not in our uh, skills program in our entrepreneurship program if we will not come to digital skills if we will not train our women our uh, young daughters our young girls on digital literacy if you won't give them then of course we are going to lose in this is globally and nationally and internationally so as an employer federation as a representative representative of the employers as all uh, the workers organization or the government uh, organizations the government have 
have a responsibility to make viable policies. The employers have to promote certain skills and entrepreneurship, which lead women to have those skills through which they can have access to job and access to decent job on the uh, uh, platform economy. Similarly, as, uh, as an ILO, ILO has always supported and ILO always represents decent work and decent work without any discrimination. So, and on top of that, another important thing is uh, that we have to ensure that working conditions for women are always compatible. If you, sometime I often hear that, oh, you know, but women don't work and women don't come. But we have to look at the uh, employable and working condition in a certain uh, factory or in a certain industry. If the working conditions are not compatible, then women will not come, of course, over there. If there's sexual harassment there, if there are no transport for women, if there are no congenial equal opportunities for women, why would women come there? So instead of blaming the women, we have rather to you know, address the core problem, the core issues that is stopping the women from participating in the economic field. Same is the case with uh, gig economy, with platform economy, how much the women have access to it, how much uh, opportunities do they get. On the, uh, on the internet usage still, even in our countries and in the lesser develop, developed countries, women are far have far less access to internet and far less access to being hired on the gig economy and gig platform. So these are some of the things that, you know, not only need word, but also need uh, strategies, act, uh, uh, action plans, and that need, you know, work from us all over, um, uh, from us also in a deliberated way. And we have to sit together. We have to promote these things for our uh, daughters, for our, uh, for our young girls, for young students. And I'm, I'm glad to know that Employer Federation of Pakistan has been, you know, uh, a leading force behind <clears throat> gender equality, as Nazar Saab was also explaining that, you know, on gender equality, Employer Federation of Pakistan has always given it a uh, leverage, has always given, has always given it a uh, forefront. So uh, with, the, uh, with the support of the ILO, ILO also supported the Empire Federation of Pakistan last year through my project in, you know, carrying out a, uh, carrying out a survey and the research report is about to be launched on how gender equality is being implemented in uh, 200 odds industries of um, Karachi and, uh, and suburbs. So I hope when this uh, comes uh, out, it will be also be a good uh, reading for everyone. So to sum up, uh, I would say that equality, inclusivity, and, and access to information, access to learning, equality based on equity and justice, and uh, transforming the world of work on based on the ideals of domestic, uh, decent work will always, uh, will always be something that is desirable. And if we promote these kind of things only then we are going to make it possible for uh, for a world that is digit, digit, uh, digital for all and for a world in which both genders men and women can play their part without any fears uh, i would thank you all for inviting me and ilo and on behalf of my country director, who's also in Quetta, I would like to thank the Empire Federation of Pakistan and all the delegates for uh, making um, uh, an IWD uh, seminar on such an important topic. Thank you very much. Thank you for your keynote address and talking about the core problems that hinder women's inclusion in technology and how we should be the ambassadors of change and not restrict women to traditional roles only. That was very well, you know, uh, needed, very much needed to talk about. And also thank you for sharing the excellent work that ILO is doing with EFP and, uh, and the various programs that we are currently working on together for women and young people. So thank you so much for your time. Now, without further ado, I would uh, request Ms. Faiza Yusuf uh, to come and uh, give her speaker session. Uh, Ms. Faiza is the founder of Women in Tech Pakistan, the biggest tech community for women technologies in Pakistan, making waves in tech industries by various programs and initiatives. She, she also co-founded Code Girls and Caterpillars, which has received immense support from the local and global tech market. 
uh, Ms. Faiza will reflect on the challenges and opportunities for women and young people girls in Pakistan in the context of the rise of freelance market and self-employment. Uh, Ms. Faita, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Leila. Just give me a second and I'm going okay. to share my screen uh, because I've prepared a couple of things to uh, discuss for today. All right, you may take your time. It's fine. Great. So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I, um, as Lela mentioned, my name is Faiza Yusuf and I've been working in tech for a little over 13 years. And for the past seven years, uh, my focus is on uh, gender inclusion in tech. Uh, the topic today is really close to uh, what I do. Uh, in, at Code Girls and uh, at Caterpillars, and I would really like to share some data to give you the context of what is available for uh, women right now. So generally, when we say a freelance marketplace, it's basically an online platform where uh, you know people meet and engage with each other. Mostly um, on one side, there are companies or clients. Uh, these can be individuals as well as organization. And on the other hand, we have freelancers who are offering their services. Uh, there are nearly 70 freelance marketplaces in the world right now. Um, a lot of them, um, you know, are generalized. Some of them are specialized. Uh, these are the top ones uh, that are available right now. So the biggest one is Upwork. Uh, then we have Fiverr, then Freelancer, and then um, People Per Hour and TopTal. Uh, TopTal is more focused towards, you know, tech and fintech and finance and stuff like that. But rest of them are pretty journalized. Uh, when we say somebody who's a freelancer, this is a person who is self-employed, uh, the person who doesn't have a boss and who works for multiple organizations and people uh, on short-term uh, projects. And when we say short-term projects, the project can be uh, somewhere from, uh, you know, three months to maybe a year or even two years, but this is not a full-time employment. So it doesn't come with uh, the bells and whistles and responsibilities and even money of a full-time job. Also, there is no job security when it comes to uh, freelancing. So these are some global statistics to give you an idea. So there are nearly 1.57 billion freelancers and the global workforce is 3.38 billion, which tells you that uh, nearly half of the world's population is somewhere on the freelance spectrum. Uh, some of them do it full time, some do it part time, some do it as needed, but there are a lot of freelancers. And we also know that uh, most of these freelancers, so majority of these freelancers are women. So 52.3% are women and then rest are men. And then the global uh, gig economy, it has, you know, it's on pace to cross four, four fifty five billion dollar mark, uh, which is amazing. It tells you the size and scale of this industry. We also know that 70, more than 70% of the freelancers find work via online markets or gig economy websites like Fiverr and Upwork. Uh, and 70% of freelancers claim that they choose to work in a gig economy for improved work-life balance because they want to uh, work from uh, flexibility and they want to be able to work from home and they should be able to work with whomever they want to work with. 60% of these freelancers who have left a full-time job to become a freelancer, they usually make more money than they did in their previous jobs. And we also know that there are 12 million registered freelancers on Upwork, making it the biggest platform for freelancers as of 2023. So I also work on Upwork. I am an expert vetted freelancer on Upwork. I've been working with them for, I've been working on the platform for six years and I have been working with them like, with Upwork as their ambassador and be, become, I've been part of their campaigns for a while now. And I can tell you that the scale of the platform and the type of work that is being done here is amazing. It's not just about uh, making a logo or writing a blog post. The kind of work that is available there is very, very different and very diverse. So when it comes to Pakistan, Pakistan is the fourth uh, you know, is on the fourth position worldwide in freelancing. And we have generated five over $500 million in last year. 
Um, and we also know that there are estimated 3 million freelancers in our country. And uh, we also know that uh, the average hourly rate for Pakistani freelancers typically ranges from $20 an hour. Um, most of these freelancers are under the age of 30. And very, very interestingly, female freelancers in Pakistan make more money than men. Uh, they make 10% more money than men in, in the same uh, you know, type of work. So what are the challenges for women freelancers in Pakistan? The biggest challenge is the access to financial services uh, because, again, uh, traditional banking services uh, have a lot of issues, even though there are a lot of campaigns being run and banks are now especially targeting freelancers that they can have their bank accounts and they wouldn't need, uh, you know, a, a salary slip or they wouldn't need an offer letter to open up a bank account. Still, there is there are a lot of women uh, who are unbanked, even though they have the skills and they can work online, they do not access traditional banking services. Um, and especially after when the Pioneer and Jazz Cash have, you know, uh, they've started working together. A lot of these women pick up uh, Jazz Cash over traditional banking services because there is a lot of red taping involved. Uh, you will see repeatedly that a lot of these women, when they go to banks to open up a bank account, they are asked to come with a male member of their families. They are also asked them to uh, to they they are also subjected to more scrutiny than when a when a when a boy goes to the bank so that's uh, that's that's a big issue and challenge um there is lack of support from families because there are a lot of care work responsibilities that women take up uh women take most of the care workers unpaid care work responsibilities of the families uh, especially in Pakistan, uh, but overall worldwide also. And uh, when it comes to working from home or working uh, with clients or having a flexible schedules, uh, it can be a double-edged sword because families would not understand that you're working or they wouldn't give you the proper space and time to kind of build your freelancing career. And there is a lot of front, uh, uh, front effort required when you are you know, starting a freelancing career. Uh, lack of community support. So, so if you are a freelancer, uh, making sure that you are upskilling and you are able to find good clients and more clients, it is difficult. Uh, you need to have that kind of community support. Uh, and there are also mobility issues. So, uh, women have to work from home, even though they have the work environment, the the ability to work from home is not that uh, you know um, encouraging. So, uh, because we do not have a lot of co-working space avail spaces available everywhere and mobility is an issue because of public transport and safety issues. So, women are also restricted there. So, uh, at, at my company, Caterpillars, we are a 100% remote team and uh, there are days when there is no electricity or there are internet issues uh, and our team is mostly women. So, we do have... Uh, we do have, uh, you know, basically arranged for access for them to a free, uh, to to uh, to a remote workspace or uh, or a co-working space. But for them, the mobility is also an issue, even though most of them are living in Karachi. So safety issues and mobility issues are there. But what are the opportunities? So there are programs. So I run Code Girls. We are a coding boot camp. Uh, we also teach entrepreneurship. And then we also have a you know whole uh, track on freelancing. There, there, there are organizations like Women's Digital League uh, who pioneered the whole, uh, you know, who are the pioneers of this whole freelancing uh, training uh, 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 training programs. Then we have Tech Pro. They teach a lot of uh, you know, coding and design skills, and then Caterpillar. So we we have partnered with Upwork itself for helping women uh, bridge that you know skill gap and also jump all the hoops and go to Upwork and start making money. Uh, there are organizations, so She Mode, She Lancers, Remote Base, Caper.io, Coe.work. So these are the organizations that specifically. Um, you know, and, and consciously look for women and help them find remote work opportunities. These are not for freelancers, but mostly for women who are looking for remote work. Uh, then there are public programs by the government. So you see e Guard, you see digital skills, digi skills. So these are the programs that have, that have also helped a lot of women to kind of start thinking about, uh, you know, a, a career in freelance. Uh, there is now support available for Pakistan software software export board on freelancer registrations. So there are a lot of benefits involved. Now you can apply for loans. Now you can get health health insurance. Uh, you can also uh, you know uh, uh, get a lot of different benefits, even visa benefits uh, if if you are a registered freelancer with PSAP. 
Uh, then there, there is support available in the form of Pakistan Free Dance Association, PAFLA. Uh, they do a lot of programs. Some of their programs are focused uh, towards women. And then, of course, we know that there is a zero tax policy on freelance earning income income uh, coming via remittance. So if you're working on Upwork or Fiverr and the money is coming from outside of Pakistan, you're making money in dollars, uh, you you have to file tax returns, but you do not, uh, you're not required to pay taxes on, on those earnings. So what, what can be the way forward uh, for a country like Pakistan to have more women who are working, uh, you know, online and making money in, in foreign exchange and they are able to, uh, you know, sustain their families and they're able to invest in their families. We need massive investments in infrastructure, including power and the Internet. Internet is such a huge issue in the country. Um, you know, the the more inland that you go, so I'm, I'm based in Karachi, but the more inland that you go, you see that internet access is an issue and so is power. Even in Karachi, we see a lot of power cuts every other day and not everybody can afford alternative, uh, you know, power sources. So massive investments in infrastructure, you know, is is what 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 I think is the way forward. Uh, then, of course, we need improved and tech centric policies from PT and PSEB. So we need policies to let to build a conducive environment for freelancers. So we see a lot of policies coming in, blocking certain websites, blocking uh, VPNs, blocking this and blocking that. We don't need that. We need an open policy so that freelancers can work because we do need to access a lot of different services and platforms, um, you know, for the work that we do. And then, of course, better policies and services for freelancers. So uh, not just being able to get a loan if you want to uh, lease a car, if you want to uh, get uh, you know other services that usually employed people can get you should also be able to get those um, we also need more skills and skilled and experienced freelancers because freelancing platforms prefer freelancers who are who are highly skilled and who are experienced because think about it in a way that uh, when it comes to upwork upwork makes money uh, by basically deducting money out of what you're making. So if you are making $100 on Upwork, Upwork takes 20% of that money. So you receive $80 and Upwork is uh, getting $20 out of it. So the, the more experienced you are, the higher the, the hourly rate or the higher uh, project cost is what going to come to the platform and they will have a meet massive card. So they will prefer a freelancer who charges $100 an hour than to a freelancer who charges $10 an hour. And in most cases, the freelancer who's charging $100 an hour is more skilled and more experienced. Uh, we also need localized uh, freelance platforms because we do, digitalize, do need digitalization of our um, local SMEs. So our small, medium enterprises, they need to be digitalize for coping up with the changing times. And for that, we also need localized freelance platforms because for, for local businesses, hiring via Upwork and Fiverr is going to be really expensive. Uh, then again, there are a lot of women who have degrees, who are doctors, engineers, uh, you know, graduates from different universities and colleges. Uh, we can bring those women back to work by joining the free, freelance workforce, by uh, helping them scale up and by finding uh, work opportunities for them. And then, of course, women need different mentoring and networking and upskilling programs. If these programs can be available for everyone, that, that, that's amazing. Uh, but because we are talking about women today, I would really, really recommend everybody, all the women who are maybe listening to me, watching me, uh, you need to get connected to a tribe. You need to get connected to a mentor, to people who can help you, who can guide you uh, so that you can upskill, you can network, and you can become part of this whole uh, freelance ecosystem. So um, thank you so much. I'm happy to answer uh, if there are any questions and uh, you can reach out if you want to have a conversation about it or if you think that I can be of any help. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Faiza, for sharing such an insightful speech on various opportunities and online platforms available for women who want to pursue their career in a uh, digital economy. I think this was very, very informative and very much needed as well. Uh, having said that, uh, I encourage everyone to look up the work Ms. Faiza and her organization have been doing. Her contribution to empowering women in tech has been commendable, to say the least. Uh, now it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker. 
Ms. Fajr Rabia is an executive director of the Pakistan Alliance for Girls Education. She has also established several successful social enterprises in the UK and Pakistan, primarily supporting education, entrepreneurship, and job creation among marginalized social groups and helping them overcome various cultural barriers that obstruct their ability to pave a route out of poverty. Uh, Ms. Fajr, I hand it over to you. Thank you. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman rahim Thank you very much uh, and Assalamu alaikum everyone. Um, thank you very much for having me here, uh, Leila. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure listening to everybody and I think everybody said everything that I would have said actually. So, Starting from uh, Nazir Saab because he very rightly touched based on uh, gender responsive programming and, uh, and, and the need to upscale our girls and women right now. I think a couple of things that I would want to touch base on is that, you know, when we're looking at uh, more so in, in a holistic sort of uh, context that uh, when we are looking at girls and women's status in Pakistan and we need to be talking about uh, women economic and social uplift and uh, and we need to understand that it is so very important for women to have uh, girls to have access to education and then access uh, to uh, learning skill sets, especially digital skill sets, because of course, as other speakers have said, how important it is for uh, for uh, for everybody, you know, not just women, but everybody to be uh, educated around digital skill sets, which are the sort of more so the upcoming skills that are required where the market is going, we're seeing how AI is playing major role, etc. And it's very important that we we plan our trainings and uh, and uh, uh, sort of you know education needs to be uh, uh, we need to bring reforms in our education at the same time you know that sort of you know covers uh, the skill sets that uh, we uh, we're talking about here uh, but more so in holistic sort of context uh, i would like to say that um, that when we're looking at women in pakistan we see that um, hardly less than 25% of women are in active labor force so a you leaving behind such a big gap there where so many uh, more women uh, could be actively engaged and uh, and if we talk about uh, the current economic crisis in pakistan for example you can imagine that a digital skills is something that can be learned very quickly and you can be very active economically active very quickly as well uh, so this could be a, a route for us you know as a country to to escape the poverty a cycle that we are currently very badly stuck in and it just doesn't seem like there's a way out of it. Uh, there's only way, you know, we can be better economically and stronger is if everybody is contributing economically, working, right? And, uh, and making sure that our female uh, population is uh, well-trained to, you know, to participate and contribute equally as well. And then, you know, uh, from, uh, and I would obviously love to talk about the social crisis we also have. It's not just the economic crisis when we talk about women. We have multiple challenges and problems that we're facing, uh, including, for example, you know, simple as um, still as early age marriages are still existent in Pakistan. We talk about domestic abuse. You know, our official figure says that 90% of the women in Pakistan face some kind of uh, uh, abuse and domestic violence so these are these are you know very uh, uh, difficult numbers to digest you know the sort of you know the crisis and the scale of crisis we're looking at and um, making our girls uh, educated and financially independent is one way for them to break away from the social uh, challenges that they're facing and uh, and and build a better nation as well because of course when women are educated they're better uh, they educated mothers and uh, and they can you know do a make actually make a huge contribution when we're talking about building the nation and you know we can go back in our history and we can see how much contribution women have been making from from the time of partition and how women came for the educated women especially how they came forward and led campaigns from you know at the forefront so you know there is just um, uh, you know like um, 
Raza Saab has also touched base and Nazar Saab also touched base that, you know, there's always uh, uh, there's this perception that women can't do it or they don't have the skill sets to do it or they don't have the leadership skills to do something, you know, when we're talking about work. But I think that's uh, that niche, that perception should start changing now because I think we've got so many role models across the country in our own country, not just globally. And we see um, how women in Pakistan are coming forward, regardless of the challenges that they're facing and the barriers they have to, you know, overcome, but they're still coming forward. You know, they're not, they haven't given up. And if they've had the opportunity to get education and if they have acquired a skill set, they're making use of it. You know, may that be from uh, in terms of working from home. Now, I would like to touch base on something, you know, because I work on girls education and a lot of our focus is on uh, uh, especially girls in in very sort of vulnerable communities, communities who are living under poverty. And we see how much disparity there is when we especially talking about uh, education is one thing, but then also digital education and access to internet and technology whatever sort of you know culturally it's still not acceptable so uh, the ones who have access who are working currently in Pakistan are the lucky ones who have a very supportive family background or or they have managed to sort of you know in, you know educate their own families and engage with them and sort of you know brought them on board that they can do the work they, they, they they're doing and I'll share a very small example. Just two weeks ago, I was uh, on the plane to Karachi from Islamabad and um, I met this young girl. Uh, she uh, she must be around 24, 25. And, uh, and she was really panicked in the plane, right? And um, I got, she was sitting in front of me. I got to speak to her. I said, you know, come back and, you know, sit with me. And so she can, she feels a bit relaxed because she said she's the first time she's, she's flying on the plane, right? And uh, and this girl is from was from Karachi and uh, and she sat down with me and then she started to talk about you know and I was just you know just generally started chatting with her so she feels a little bit more comfortable on the plane and not scared and panicked. Um, so I just asked her, okay, you know, how come you're flying alone? You know, is somebody coming to pick you up at the airport? And she said, yes, my mother is coming to pick me up, and uh, and very you know. All of a sudden, she said, I I had to run away from home. I'm going back home, right? So this was not something that I was expecting. You know, all of a sudden, she just came out with it. And then she started to tell me, um, you know, how much problem she had at home, not from her father, not from her mother, but from her brothers who are all elder to her. And she's the only sister. So she told me that, you know, she couldn't continue her education after matriculation because her parents couldn't afford her father, couldn't afford the education any longer. And, and her mother was unwell. So she, she had to stay back at home to take care of her mother. And then she said that in January, I finally signed up you know, on a on a digital program so I can learn freelancing. So maybe I can get, you know, I can learn and I can start working. And uh, and her brothers didn't approve of it. Now, this I'm not talking about of a rural area in Pakistan, and I'm not talking about this, you know, a village in Pakistan. I'm talking about a city like Karachi that I feel is very, say, I say Karachi is more progressive than Lahore, Islamabad, and other cities in Pakistan, right? And then this girl, very, you know, she started to cry. She had tears running down her uh, cheeks and she started, she showed me her head, which was all swollen up from here, right? This young girl, and she's so innocent, right? She was so innocent. And she told me how she got beaten up by her brothers. And, uh, and so much so that she got so scared that she ran away. And for simple fact that she was learning and, you know, getting training so she can be uh, she can become a freelancer and her brothers didn't approve of it right so the point of you know narrating the story here is that this unfortunately the mindset exists nationally and it is so important that you know when we are planning our programs when we are looking at policies there's more and it's great to see there's more and more work that is being done there's there are more and more organizations coming forward uh, you know teaching digital skills and all sorts of interesting things and that's great but we need to remember there's a big sort of you know uh, a percentage of girls who are currently have no access whatsoever to internet to laptops to smartphones simply because they're not allowed to you know have 
the access at all even though if their families can afford to give them uh you know get internet at home and they they can buy them a laptop or whatever that may be right so i think it's something very important and again i keep saying that it's so important to have these young girls engaged these girls who have left education who have dropped out of education they can be reengaged they can be retrained they can be trained and given digital skills so they can start working because that financial independence would not only lead to uh economic empowerment of our country and you know better situation for our country but also for better situation for our girls as well because we have seen multiple examples of girls in villages who have uh sort of you know uh got education who have started to work and are financially independent and no matter how conservative their families were they are now accepted in the family because they're supporting the families financially as well because you know majority of these girls are coming from very very poor background so we can bring that change you know we you know in terms of giving i think girls that uh, independence uh, the respect and and uh, you know sort of recognizing the skill sets they have and they can gain and you know the great work they can do as well so it's not you know i think we it's about time like i was saying before we've got so many brilliant role models across the country it's about time that people start to understand that women should have equal access to education equal access to learning skills equal access to working and you know whatever career path they want to go and of course digital is something that we really promote we really encourage given that this is where the world is going and we need to you know we're already behind and when you're behind it's a good time to just you know instead we don't need to catch up we can just start from where the world is right now but for that like uh, uh, faiza has very rightly said so already that what we require is from the government is a great investment in the infrastructure internet accessibility if you go in north you see how poor internet connections are so we you know and and all the rural areas you go into balochistan etc wherever you know whichever areas are sort of uh, not easily accessible we also find that internet access is also very poor there as well so we need to i think you know the government needs to uh, sort of do these things i think government as government can uh, bring a lot of change when we're talking about the mindset by just you know running campaigns you know media campaigns to say you know what let's get our girls trained let's get our girls especially you know the ones who have dropped out of education who may have done matriculation and they have basic skills and they can be engaged and they can be trained and give them the opportunity to do so and just so you know just you know if just so you know a couple of figures uh, and statistics you know less than 10% of the women have uh, 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 have their own their own bank account you know and uh, i think it's about 7 8% at the moment uh, but it's less than 10% and you know less than 25% are actively involved in labor force and uh, and you can see that you know there's a huge scope there there's huge potential there uh, not only for economic uplift but also for a social uplift as well and i think you know um, women can play a major role uh, in the country and uh, in in developing the country in a in a country that is you know and building better perception you know we keep talking about you know we do we do a lot of global engagement and and we see how much problem we have with global perception as well and there's so much work that has to be done around that to showcase people that pakistan is a great country pakistan has huge potential and resources and the youth that we have you know and uh, and uh, and but that, for that we all have to come forward and we need to showcase that and uh, we need to you know educate our girls particularly and showcase how uh, you know how clever and intelligent our girls are and we, when we look at look at our academic results we see our girls are doing far better than boys when we look at academic achievement so so they have it in there they all they need is a little bit of support and uh, a bit of push and facilitation and resources and then you know they can do wonders inshallah so i think you know these are the sort of you know kind of uh, very important uh, things that we need to think about i think couple of things that i've been talking about again and again in in every because there's so much going on around uh, women's week and women's day uh some of the things that i would really like to put forward is that when we running these programs uh, please include leadership skills for girls particularly our girls unfortunately do not get that kind of supportive environment at home where their leadership skills are developed and this really really uh, damages 
our girls when they grow up and they finally get into work environment as well because they don't they lack confidence they don't have the communication skills and they're further pushed back because they lack those leadership skills so when we are running any training programs anything to do with tech or whatever skill set that may be you know please include leadership skills the soft skills which are like also lacking you know we see you know in the universities for example i was just at a university just before coming here and you know we had very open discussion around how much universities are lacking in providing not just the girls but the boys also with the soft skills that they need to have so they're prepared for uh, you know entrepreneurship and employability and uh, you know as pakistan alliance for girls education we're making effort on our end in terms of uh bringing in programs at uh, for girls particularly at secondary uh, education level so they start to um you know learn digital skills they start to learn employability skills entrepreneurship skills and personal development skills at an early age rather than we wait for them to complete college and university and then end up in an incubation center and you know are or employment and they you know they still uh, have those gaps um, so that's i think you know something that we're doing we're very excited we just uh, uh, signed an agreement with princess trust international and we're bringing their program which is called achieve in pakistan which is, which is completely focused on girls and uh, and the gs bank has been very kind enough to support the program and fund the program so so we are also looking at very sort of you know um, i wouldn't call them innovative programs because these programs have been going on for such a long time but our effort is that we want our girls to be able to access these programs and digital programs from an earlier age so they're better prepared um, you know for for a, for a future and uh, better prepare then let's just say we hand them over to fiza to learn more digital skills you know so they prepared for these you know for and they can just you know go head on and uh, and get started and i think you know this um, amazing work that is being done over the last few years we've seen so much push around uh, um, you know tech in pakistan i think that's great but we need to make sure that there are more women in tech more women in leadership position in tech as well so i think you know as um, as a as a nation as stakeholders as people of pakistan we need to you know make our make our effort to make sure that uh, happens and and girls get to sort of you know grow in their careers and uh, uh, you know this glass ceiling that we constantly talk about is you know is not there for them and uh, you know they can just progress based on their hard work and intelligence and skills that they have and uh, and i think you know if we can do that and if we can keep very focused um uh, of we say very focused around it then over next 10 years we may start actually seeing change in pakistan economically as well as well as socially and uh, you know i think pakistan alhamdulillah is a great country and uh, you know, so much potential here and uh, you know we I, i think you know our women can do amazing work knowing that uh, you know and i keep saying that we have to uh, really accept the fact that we're women you know and we I, and i i say we are superior being basically because we can multitask and we can do so much at the same time uh, that are you know uh, that men may not be able to do men are very focused you know they have to do one thing at a time women don't have to do that we are mothers at the same time we are sisters and we we fulfill our you know family responsibilities and and we better leaders because we are we more emotionally i think sensitive so you know when women are in leadership position i think you have better work environment and uh, more supportive environment especially for girls and women and uh, i think that's something very important that if we can push that and we can bring up you know women forward um then we'll we'll see amazing change in pakistan thank you very much uh thank you so much ms faiza for your powerful address your you certainly had all of our attention thank you for talking about the need for a changed mindset your work is most inspiring and commendable as you also encourage and provide a platform for girls in under privileged areas to pursue their education in uh technology and empower them with the support and resources they need so thank you so much for coming on board it's been a pleasure uh as you mentioned the need for uh, trainings in leadership skills and other soft skills efp has also been working on it for a while and we have many other projects lined up uh with our trainers and we are hoping to get ms faiza on board as well for these programs i hope 
so now as we come to the end of the speaker session, I would like to thank all the speakers for their incredible and thoughtful remarks. And I think for me, there were quite a few highlights like how Sir, uh, Sir Nazar addressed the need for gender responsive programs and the policies that promote uh, inclusivity. And then followed by Mr. Razi talking about the need for businesses to be ambassadors of change and the way women should not be restricted to the traditional roles only. Then the statistics that Ms. Faiza shared were honestly quite informative and uh, it was something I even didn't know before. And plus the challenges women uh, freelancers face, it was very well put. I think we need to talk about it more in order to create a more feel, uh, more inclusive freelance market. And then how Ms. Fajr addressed uh, the, the economic and other social problems women face. And I think they were very much needed. And the way you talked about it just had our attention throughout. So thank you so much. Uh, and plus how both Ms. Faiza and Ms. Fajr talked about the role of government and changing the whole infrastructure so we can create the whole uh, space more inclusive for women. This is very much needed as well. So thank you again for your uh, incredible remarks. And now I'd like to take out a few minutes to read some questions that we had because I, I wanted to address them in the end so that the whole process won't be disturbed. So if you can just give me a minute. I think you have answered a couple of them. So one we have uh, by Mr. Dibaj Abdi, how we can engage girls in rural areas for gaining digital based skill sets when they do not have proper schooling. So I would like Ms. Fajr to uh, answer it. And then Ms. Faiza can add in the remarks as well. Sorry, what was the question again? Uh, the question was, how can we engage girls in rural areas for gaining digital-based skill sets when they do not have proper schooling? OK, so I think, yes, very important question. I think, um, uh, A, please, the first step starts with the community engagement and parental engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, we we need to be able to uh, make sure that once you identify a village, let's just say that you go in and engage with the local communities to start with and bring them on board because this is one of the biggest challenges that we have, like I said before, that the girls are actually not allowed to use internet, even in school settings, right? So parents are very hesitant of that. So uh, a very comprehensive community engagement policy is needed and bringing community, community leaders on board, parents on board, and making them understand that if a girl is learning a digital skill, then it how that pays way for her uh, uh, better future and the future of the family as well. So I think it starts with that. And then when we're talking about digital skills, I think, you know, um, if, yeah, globally, if you look at, and even in Pakistan, we now have many um, accelerated programs of education as well. And uh, for example, now, depending on the level of education the girls have, if they have nothing at all, then they can still be engaged on, uh, uh, for example, we deliver a program called, uh, which is uh, a curriculum developed by JICA, and it's called an accelerated learning program which is basically, uh, and regardless of what age you are at, you can do that program. And within three years, you can complete your basic primary education. What we need to be able to do is, is be clever enough to integrate other programs with that main curriculum. So why, or, or for example, JICA has also developed, and globally we've seen programs develop, which are very focused literacy programs and numeracy programs. So girls and boys as well are able to read and write uh, basic, you know, uh, you know, they're able to read and write basically and, and do the numbers. Numeracy is also very, very important here. And we can pick up these programs and these can be sort of integrated with uh, digital skills programs. And uh, I think, you know, you could come up with a nice comprehensive program, keep it very neat focused, very responsive. And uh, I mean, this is what we do. We would go into an area, we would do a mapping, we would do assessment of the children and the girls particularly and see what kind of community you're working with. If uh, I mean, there's, for example, there's so many areas where we've gone in and we've set up where uh, female literacy rate is uh, zero, literally, right? I mean, even this day and age, you say, okay, you go to this village and there's not a single school for girls and all the women in that village, is, uh, village are um, uneducated, right, illiterate. So it, you have to be able to map out and you have to understand what the local challenge is, what the problem is, how much education is available, not available. And that's when you should design the programs. But I think 
globally i think we don't need to reinvent the wheel i think there's a lot of programs there out there now that can be picked up and that can be adapted i think a lot of work has already been done and um I'm kind of, you know, sort of away from, uh, I don't like that word of, uh, in the development sector, this, and with the donors, there's a huge problem that we, we keep thinking of innovation, right? And I don't think we need to think of innovation yeah, anymore. Solutions are there. Uh, exactly. We just need to be able to scale up. We need to be able to understand how our communities are, what challenges are there. Understanding that Balochistan is different from Sindh and Sindh is different from Punjab and they're different cultures and we need to accept that, that, you know, that's their culture and there's nothing wrong with it. So our programming and our response needs to be based on, you know, the local, um, you know, whatever the challenge is there. So I think even if the girls have no education, there are solutions there to engage uh, to give them basic education and to have them engaged on or educate them on digital skills as well. Thank you. Okay, so I just uh, saw that Miss Faiza has already answered most of the questions. Okay. So I, I just need to ask one question from Miss Faiza and then I have like last question to, I just want to ask from the both of you. So Miss Faiza, uh, there was this question where what are the smart techniques for Upwork to reach out any clients? So I think this is a very important question for people trying to, you know, pursue uh, freelancing and just to, you know, get more clients. So if you can just precisely tell us about it. So, um, so again, Upwork is a huge platform. I just mentioned there are 12 million freelancers. Mm. So for someone who's starting out, again, it, it is going to take a bit of time for you to break, uh, you know, the barrier and get entry into it. The first thing you need to do is to basically identify what exactly is your niche and then collect some sort of portfolio for yourself. Either these could be projects that you've done already or projects that you make as samples uh, to show that you can do what you're saying you can do. Then you build a profile. That profile needs to be really keyword optimized in the sense that you should understand that what clients are searching for when, when they are searching for that specific skill set. So mentioning the name of tools is really important. For example, if you're a designer and you do work in Canva, then mentioning Canva is important. If you're a developer, mentioning the specific technology and the type of industry that you work in is really important. The next step is to have a video uh, introduction of yourself. That's absolutely important for you to get noticed. Upper gives you the ability to upload, or to basically add a link to a video where you are talking who you are, uh, talking about who you are and what kind of skill sets do you have and what kind of help you can provide to the client. This builds confidence uh, on the client's end because they see, they can see that there is a human actually talking to them. The person has confidence, the person has good communication skills, and this seems like someone who uh, who looks approachable. So it's, it's a trust building exercise that you do when you add a video introduction and you do like two minutes talking about uh, you know, who you are, then do not copy paste proposals, look for specific projects, and then apply by adding customized cover letters. If you're going to send one proposal to every single client, nobody's going to respond to you. Uh, in the first few months, at least the first three months, I would recommend getting a plus membership. This is a small investment that is going to pay you in multiple folds. Uh, that's around $14.99 for a month. Uh, you can get it for two months or a month. Is It will going to give you access to a lot of advanced services and you need those advanced services to kind of start working and uh, start getting clients. And when you get, once you get clients, you don't need to pay that plus membership anymore. You can just turn your profile to a basic profile like I have. Um, so uh, optimized profiles, complete profiles, customized cover letters, video introduction, and uh, ability to... Um, ability to send out a specific type of portfolio items to your clients is really important and um, again if you if you can you should get your profile reviewed by a peer that always help having a having an extra pair of eyes can never hurt so uh, i think these these things should happen Uh, okay, thank you so much for replying back. It was very well put. Uh, I just have one more question. It's by, it's anonymous, okay. So it is, I totally understand that we need, we have to do the course, we will learn to get the certification, but is it the institute that is, that is provided uh, help in practically implementing the strategies? 
So I want us, at least like one of you to answer it. I I just want to know that what certification is she talking about? If she's talking about um, freelancing, then the or then the training platforms that help freelancers, uh, you know, uh, get trained and get access to uh, freelance services. Uh, they you don't need to get a certification. You can completely learn it on your own. YouTube is your best friend. Uh, you you will find millions and millions of resources on how to build a profile, how to do this and how to do that. If you if you're good with self learning, I, you do not need to go to an institute. Do it yourself. I recommend going to an institute or learning from uh, uh, learning from somewhere where you have peers. Is because it builds accountability. You do not get bored and you stay on track. So uh, going to the going to the program is really important. Getting the freelancing skill certification has no value. You don't you don't need that certification. You just need the skill set. So if you can get the skill set from self learning, brilliant. If you can't, then go. Um, you can go to uh, if you want to learn to code. You can go to Code Girls. If you want to learn freelancing, uh, you can go to uh, Hisham's classes. You can go to Digi Skills. You can go to Pafla uh, webinars. You can also come to Caterpillars. So um, you you can just come there. You will have access to somebody who already works on Upwork and Fiverr and is, and is successful and they will take you hold your hand and take you step by step by step to you know make sure that you are able to get on the platform successfully and also are able to uh, secure a client okay so I just have one last question that uh, I want to ask since I have like two amazing ladies here with me and who have worked their way up so I think we should really talk about this. So there was this question that the mindset of our families and communities is very difficult. How can we change their mindset to ensure that young girls have access to education and digital skills training? I want both of you to address this question for like a bit to talk about the mindset that, you know, they see families have and how difficult because we all can relate to it to some extent. So I just want to talk about how difficult it is to, you know, go out and, you know, uh, find opportunity opportunities when you're so held back from your own family. So any uh, like I want both of you to talk about it. So you anyone can start. Miss Fajr. Yeah. Yeah, okay, thank you so much. I think uh, uh, it's a very difficult question. And uh, I think there is no one answer for it. I mean, you know, because, uh, you know, I think um, it's a very difficult situation to be in when your own family is not supportive or don't understand, you know, and I think this is where it's important that a that you yourself keep talking to them. Uh, I think keeping in mind that we have uh, many challenges such as, you know, uh, in our culture, respect is a sort of, you know, is seen as a if we, if a child speaks up, and you know sort of you know demand something then that is seen as uh, uh, disrespectful right so i think you know you have to understand and what kind of relationship you have with your family and you got to sort of i think take advantage of you know you have that sort of you know power over your family where you can engage with them you can speak with them and i think it uh, always having somebody you know you got to you it's very strategic you got to be very clever about it you got to keep an eye out in your family who's who is more progressive in that way who is you know who you can take on board as your sort of you know you need support structure you can't you know it's very difficult to do these things on our own finding that support structure is very important within our own family it could be your brother it could be your sister it could be your mother it could be your father it could be you know it could be your it could be somebody who could also come on board with you and try and convince your uh, family to uh, sort of, you know, uh, let you, um, it, you know, have education and be uh, active as well and, you know, economically active as well. I think, you know, this is something. And, and I think, you know, for parents, what we see is, you know, generally the feedback we have from parents is that they're scared that if a girl goes online, uh, she will not understand the dangers associated be of being online, which are very true, right? Um, and uh, uh, instead of trying to educate our children, especially girls, in terms of, of the risks and ensuring that they understand how to uh, protect themselves, what we tend to do is, is just completely ban, you know, 
internet for example uh, just to you know safeguard our children so i think that's something uh, that's a wrong approach from parent side and parents need to be able to educate their children and these dangers exist the very rightly so there are a lot of problem and uh, children uh, both boys and girls need to understand the risk engaged and i think there's some great programs going on around cyber security and uh, using internet safely i think online you can see these programs as well it's very important that parents can also do this parents should also do this program as well as children and i wish you know at some point if our schools also start doing these programs in the schools you know with the schools that actually have access to internet and lab etc you know especially in the government schools because uh, i think in elite schools we don't really find that problem anyway you know uh, you know these well paid you know fee paying schools uh, i don't think those girls generally have a lot of those issues is generally more uh, girls who are coming from middle class families or lower middle class families and girls particularly who are living under poverty so the less access their family has had uh, to tech etc the more fear there is uh, and i think we need to build that trust with our families we need to tell them that we understand uh, the risks associated to it and if you're doing something keep it open keep it transparent and tell them what you're learning what you're not learning and uh, and you know and the benefit you will have uh, from learning you know i don't know let's say a free, any freelancing a, a web development course or whatever that may be right so i think that communication needs to be very open with our parents um, and we're not maybe used to of having that open conversation as well so i think um, you know a child can also take that step and kind of build that sort of relationship so i think that's something very important again i mean we would never advise our girls that you go out and fight and do this and do that because i think it's very important that we have to build that relationship and uh, think of long term benefit of doing it slow and steady so you don't have problems in the future as well thank you miss faiz if you could just want if you want to add anything I think uh, Fajr has um, rightly answered, and I covered most of the points. Just one thing that, uh, because as human beings, we get influenced by other human beings. So, uh, in my mind, visibility to role models and success stories can really change the game here. Um, when we talk about encouraging more women to STEM, when we talk about uh, having more women working in tech, having more women in leadership skills. The number one issue that we see is that they are unable to find a role model that they can look up to and somebody that they can model their careers, um, you know, after. So it's really important. Uh, and it's something that you've seen it. We have seen in our families also. So just one girl, um, you know, when she goes to the university and does really well, you will see a lot of other girls after her start coming going to universities because parents see that okay so uh, you know her child can do it so i can't mind i would love to have her the education also so that level of positive influence is really important and i think um we need to give visibility to more role models and our parents should also interact with it i at code girls shamim and i we love to interact with the families of the girls who come uh, we meet them when they talk to us look at us they realize that okay it's fine it's it's a place women run it it's safe there are women in the leadership positions you know we would love to send out books so that kind of again open communication is important and visibility to people that um you know that that are working and that can vouch for uh vouch for for the you know uh, vouch for a slice of the pie for the upcoming girls uh thank you all uh very much for your interesting questions and uh, I, I know we only have like three minutes left so i'll pass it on to miss rabia our assistant sg uh secretary general here at efp for some closing remarks and then we'll officially wrap up for uh, a wrap up our program so miss rabia you have the floor thank you lala and uh, thank you to all the speakers and uh, the audience that are listening to us right now um i must say okay, what powerful session tha, especially a, a session where you can take away something uh, like uh, you know tangible platforms so miss uh, faiza ne share ki hai, and uh, just say for example upwork fiber fiber and other platforms just me hum literally ja kar, we can find remote jobs very easily i'm very thankful to Ms. Fajr as well for her inspiring remarks and you know encouraging the young women uh, 
you know, they they have to find confidence to fight the stigma that is in our communities and in our families. And it's very easy to do so once you start sharing and the experiences of the people around you, such as yourselves. Uh, okay, it's possible. It's not. Uh, it's a stigma. It's a. It's a thought that has not well thought of. But if we start working on it, uh, uh, most uh, surely, okay, we can find meaningful work for women in the digital economy as well. And you know, speaking from an employer side, I think uh, when we talk about stakeholders, the work of uh, stakeholders is very important in um, you know ensuring that women and young girls, especially in the underprivileged areas, have access to to the digital platform. Um, for example, when we talk about stakeholders, we're talking about uh, employers, we're talking about government, we're talking about development sectors, and even families and communities, they all play a very crucial role uh, in you know, ensuring that young girls and women, they, they, they are able to uh, upskill and find employment in the digital economy. For example, employers, because we're from the employer side, I think it's very important to start that conversation for, uh, uh, to, to, to work in this area, either by you know, offering internship and apprenticeship programs where they can actually, uh, you know, help women who are interested in the digital economy and the digital platforms. They can really provide training in mentorship. Uh, the government role is very crucially important that they can support uh, uh, the employment of the women and the, the of course, page and other. Uh, organizations as well. Jinka uh, come, uh, you know, to offer an encounter. So I'll end by saying, okay, thank you very much for all your attention for being here uh, on, uh, and uh, we hope to continue this conversation in the future as well. Hopefully, to have you all on. Uh, thank you so much, Rabia, and thank you all to all the participants and the speakers for joining us today for this insightful discussion. We hope that you found it very informative. Thank you again uh, to our speaker for sharing their expertise and insights for, with us today. So I'll just wrap it up. Thank you so much for giving me your time. It's been a pleasure working with you both uh, here and then Sir Nazi who had to leave now. So thank you so much. We'll surely be in touch and we'll surely uh, make sure that we work on different projects together and, and take this, this webinar further. So thank you so much. Uh, Khud Hafiz. Uh, thank you. Day. Take you care. Too. Bye. Khud Hafiz.